I know what you're thinking. Oh great, another pretentious video about film photography. Buddy, you ain't even seen the full title yet. Technology. It's a crucial component of our everyday lives. It's what you use to study, talk with friends, pay your bills, engage in all sorts of depraved behavior. You could argue that technology is a kind of, sort of, super duper important thing. If you're at all interested in camera equipment, then you're well aware of what happens whenever one of the major brands releases a new camera. Your YouTube feed gets, simply put, bombarded with reviews and previews of that new piece of gear. And, of course, you can't help but feel like you're missing out on something really important. Like your work has no chance of improving without a camera that can shoot 8K at 240 frames per second. It's simple math, really. You could apply this sort of thinking to any piece of technology that you use on a regular basis. There's a new iPhone? Well then, I guess your current phone is, as the French would say, hot garbage. I mean, it still works fine, but it doesn't even have a liquid retina display. You obviously don't want to ruin your eyesight with subpar screen technology. Do you? These new Tesla cars can drive themselves? What's that? Your car only drives stick? Well then, guess it's time to face the facts and drive that rust bucket straight into the trash heap. There's a new PlayStation? PlayStation 4? More like PlayStation 4 get you, am I right? Ha! Huh. It's almost as if marketing has successfully managed to drill into our brains that we no longer have any sense of value or worth outside of the things that we own. <laughs> what was this video even about? Oh yeah, that's right, film photography. It was with that exact newer is always better mindset that a couple of years ago, while helping clear out my grandparents' basement, down a hallway in a dusty decrepit cupboard, I found a Soviet legend, the Zenit 11, about as popular in my country in the 80s and 90s as wearing colorful baggy clothes and driving around in a Yugo. The more I studied the thing, the more it fascinated me. While my digital camera could shoot over 4,000 raw images, which you can then edit as much as you want, this thing could only shoot 36. While my digital camera could shoot at a shutter speed of 8,000, this thing was capped at 500. Oh yeah, and those 36 photos? They'll cost you! You could be swimming in SD cards for the same price that shooting and developing a month's worth of film. The only way you'd know whether your photo was properly exposed or not was to use this little light meter on the side. It only works like half the time. It felt so basic, so primitive, I just couldn't help but wonder what sort of photos would I be able to get out of this thing if I were to use it today. Shooting on a film is equal parts exciting and terrifying. The excitement comes in the form of not knowing what the hell your photos are gonna end up looking like, which is also, interestingly enough, the reason for concern. You only have 36 photos, you get to see the results way after you've already taken the shot, and there's no real fixing it in post. One more thing to consider is which film stock you're gonna use. Every film stock has its own specific look and its own specific ISO value. One type of film might be great for skin tones, thus making it great for portraits, while the other might be better for landscapes. What all these limitations end up doing is slowing you down and making you think about all your shots a lot more carefully. There's a certain texture and quality that really brings film to life and makes photos from my digital camera look sterile and plain in comparison. Fortunately though, there is a way to bridge that gap and capture some of the film look on a modern digital camera. While the Zenit itself is a clunky old beast with a slow shutter speed, semi-functional light meter and loud as fuck shutter, the mount on the front is a gateway to some of the most bang for buck lenses you're ever gonna find. Some are built like tanks and can produce tack sharp results, while others are downright quirky and full of character. Let's start with the lens that came as a pack-in with the camera itself, the legendary Helios 44M 58mm f2. This lens 
is easily the most popular vintage lens of all time, seeing as how everyone and their dog has made a video about it at this point, and with good reason too. For a full year, it was pretty much permanently mounted onto my Canon DSLR, only to be eventually replaced by even more amazing M42 lenses, key among them the Tacumar 50mm f1.4 and my most prized possession, the Carl Zeiss Jena Flectagon 35mm f2.4. I've adapted these lenses across different brands and generations of cameras and I've used them for all sorts of photography and videography. There's a reason why the saying goes, you date your cameras, but marry your lenses. So just to bring you up to speed, new tech sucks, 40 year old cameras and lenses are way better, this video is 4x3 and black and white and oh my god when did I become such a hipster. <laughs> I'm not the type to romanticize listening to music on vinyl over using Spotify, or the type to rant about how shooting digital means the death of cinema. I look at my film camera more as a companion to my digital camera. Using one makes you appreciate using the other. I think every photographer should, at the very least, give it a try as it's a great way to hone your skills and really focus on the most essential elements that make up a great photo. If you made it this far, I'm guessing you enjoyed the video, so do leave a like, perhaps subscribe, and next time I might even talk about a piece of technology that's released in this current century. You never know.